so, um, you know, here's the deal. Um, like, if you haven't realized this, and so this might be a new thing for you um, to, to understand, but um, there's like, as children say, there's only five sleeps until Christmas morning. Y'all with me? Five. Um, but I just want to, I want to reflect a little bit about that, about, you know, as I do every Sunday, about, you know, it's, it's, it's some ways it's hard to believe it's only five days until Christmas. Does that make sense? You know, um, and, and of course, you know, for me, Christmas Eve is the highlight. Um, and so, you know, it's four days till Christmas Eve, the best hours of the whole year. And uh, we are doing it. I'll talk about that during announcements if we have time. But, um, you know, Christmas Eve, we, we are doing it in person and um, we're going to be distanced and we're going to have masks on. And so it's not going to be like every other Christmas Eve in the sense that especially at our five o'clock celebration um, last year, our official count was like 380 people. And so, you know, we're packed in this place like cows in a barn. Not happening this year, and that's okay. We'll be spaced, it'll be appropriate, but we're still shooting for God making those hours the best hours of the whole year. Amen? That's what we're shooting for, okay? Four days till then. So I was reflecting on this and thinking, you know, in a normal year, in a pre-COVID year, in a non-COVID year, um, <clears throat> Christmas, Christmas can be different things for different people, right? We already know that. Right? For some people, for some people, Christmas time. And I'm going to say Christmas time um, just for shorthand because that could be like, you know, the weekend before, the weekend after. It could be Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Different families do different things. So I'll just say Christmas time. Christmas time can be different things for different people. It can be a time of joy and happiness. It really, truly can be people that feel like it is the most, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It's a time of fulfillment. It's a time of a break from routine. It's a time of, 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 of a, a time to rest. Or for some people, it's it's the most stressful time of the year, okay? Different people are found on Christmas time differently, right? For some people, it's disappointing. For some people, it's sad. And I'm talking about just in a normal year, you know? If, if especially it's the, it's, if it's the first Christmas where there's an empty seat at the table or in the living room because of death of a loved one, right? It can be different Christmas day, Christmas time. It, in some ways, it can just be a mess, a mess of emotions, and it's a mess of memories and, 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 and expectations. It's, it's, you know, look, Christmas time and Christmas Day is what I've always, always called for many, many years. A yardstick day, right? Some of you longtime Granby folks know what I'm talking about. It's a yardstick day because it's a day that comes or a time that comes every year. And we have a lot of memories and we have a lot of emotions and we have a lot of stuff going on around that. And so it's a yardstick day because it's a day when if we're brave enough, we might measure how things are in life and where we are compared to last year or the year before or how, how we haven't gained. Maybe we've taken some steps back. Whatever. It's a yardstick day. It comes every year. And I'll say it again. It's, it's always Every year, different. It could be different every year of what we bring to it. Um, so this year, I think it's going to be like this. Either A, either we're going to be really, really happy that in five days we get a break um, from the last nine months. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to, we're going to embrace it. And we're going to grab hold of it. This, this Friday... Um, <clears throat> This Friday, Alec wanted me to go with him um, shopping, and I don't like to shop, really, really. I like, like, I have in my mind what I want. I want to walk in the store, buy it, and leave. Does that make sense? And, and not shop. But anyway, anyway. So I was like, I'm going to go up to Black Earth, Wisconsin. Does everybody know where Black Earth, Wisconsin is? Some of you do. They've got the greatest shoe store uh, around called the Shoe Box, all right? Yeah, it's getting a hand. That's worth a hand. You're like, yes. Yes, Black Earth and, 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 and Carol, if you're watching Mount Horeb, cool little town, great little Main Street, said, yeah, let's just go. Let's, I'll ride along with you, you know, and maybe I'll get some boots or whatever. And so uh, we, we did. And I realized by getting away, because see, understand, is that Alec has to go to Mount Horeb because they so sell his size shoe there. Instead of buying them online, he can go up there and try on the size 17 double wide or whatever, right? <laughs> And I'm not making fun of, of him for having big feet. Here's the way. I, my dad had a friend that had really, you know, large shoe size. And he would, people would tease him about his shoes. And he, he, his name was Jim, Jim Adams. And he would always say, well, you know, uh, uh, an outhouse doesn't have a really big foundation. <laughs> right. So Alec has a great foundation. He has a 
big foundation. So we went up there and, 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 and uh, uh, went to the shoe store, stopped by the grumpy troll. And I said to Alec, I said, this year, you know, the next five days, the next several days, I just want to, I want to embrace it. I want to try and find joy. I want to find love. I want to try and find hope. I want to find positive things. And, and it's not that I'm apathetic towards some things, but man, I have just got to let those go. Do you all understand what I'm trying to say? And I think that's where, yeah, I hope you do. And that's where I think some people, some people, I hope it's you, are going to look at these next five days. We're going to look at Christmas time and say, you know, in spite of, in spite of everything that's gone on in the last nine months, man, I'm going to be all into this. I'm going to be all in. And, and I might even break down and watch a Lifetime Christmas movie. I don't know. I'm just going to be all in. Okay. Or some people are looking at Christmas time and saying this year is going to be even more difficult than usual. Because again, for some people, it's not always the most wonderful time of the year. And it's been, in some ways, maybe magnified, right? And in some ways, I was thinking about this, like, you know, with all the virus stuff, it's like, I almost was going to preach like this, this is going to be an historic Christmas, or that word I hate, I've now started to hate, unprecedented Christmas. But then I realized that's not true. You know that? It's not true. In other words, if you think about it, every Christmas can be historic or memorable. Like uh, it can be a, a, a milestone Christmas where from now on you measure before and after, right? It's like a milestone. Like, well, that was the Christmas before dad died, right? I mean, it's a milestone event besides a yardstick event. Um, but, you know, depending on where you're at, every Christmas can be memorable, right? So I was thinking about for example, baby's first Christmas. If you have children, if you have a child, your first one, that first Christmas was probably pretty special. Is that fair? Pretty memorable. You probably have the, the, at least one ornament on the tree that celebrates baby's first Christmas. Okay? Or the first Christmas that, that you're married. Or like some people, Alec and Stacy, first Christmas they're engaged, right? Um, I, 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 I got to look at my notes. I think that's on the positive memories. Isn't it? Is that positive? So, I don't want to speak for it. Okay? Um, or, you know, you start looking at these big events like, like, oh, that was the Christmas. That was the first year we were, here, we were in our house and it was really good. Okay, historic. You see my point? Or, or for other people, it can be an historic Christmas. It can be an unprecedented Christmas. Maybe it's the first Christmas you're alone. Or maybe it's the first Christmas that you're going to celebrate with a loved one that's died and they can't be there and, and, and for the food and for the presents and for the, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you could fill in the blank. The point is... Because Christmas comes the same time every year, and because it carries with it so much in the form of memories and traditions and expectations and history, Christmas always finds us, always, every year, finds us in different ways, mentally and emotionally, every year. And this Christmas is no exception. And yet, I have to acknowledge that for many people, some feelings are magnified because of all the the changes and the precautions and the virus. If you agree with that, say yes. It's different for some people, and I'm allowing that and acknowledging that, right? And it's it's to this point that this week, you know, in talking about this, it's going to be a different kind of Christmas. doesn't mean bad, and that's what I've tried to stress in the last 10 minutes. doesn't mean bad, right? As we were talking about the Gospel of John in, in, a, in a small group, somebody wisely pointed out to me, she said, quote, this year it seems like everyone is searching, not just a few people. And the more I thought about that, the more I said, I agree. Not everybody, but more and more people are searching for something, right? And I don't mean the perfect Christmas gift, and I don't mean the perfect stocking stuffer, or I don't mean searching for the perfect new recipe to impress your in-laws on Christmas dinner. I don't mean that. I mean, kind of like Bono saying in U2, right? I'm searching, I'm looking, and I haven't found what I'm looking for. And we could probably display lists, right? And so I, I made one up, like, like people are searching. Searching for what? As we talked about it in the small group, we hit on some of these things. Is it is that there may be some people out there or in here that are searching for resolution to something? Or they're searching for happiness and joy. Or people are searching for certainty, right? Or safety, or love, or hope, or searching for that peace that passes all understanding, which means it's a sense of contentment, it's a sense of healing, it's a sense of wholeness. Searching, searching. We talked about that and I said, yep. 
that might be what is most unique and most different about this Christmas time than other Christmas times is that perhaps more people than usual are searching for something. And so as you look at the list, either at home or in person, maybe you would add something to that that I didn't cover, and that's fine, right? Now look at this list again, either at home or here. You see, when I put that list together um, this week, I thought, you know, what, what all those words, all those words, you know what they really should be thought of? That's home, right? Because remember, home, home isn't just a place, a physical place. What we've been working off of all through Advent is that home is a state of living. It's a state of being. It's a state of, of going through your day, of, of finding home. The, the hope is, is that we find home in our living and doing, meaning we grow in feeling stable and we grow in feeling certainty and we grow in feeling safe because the physical place the apartment or whatever, our dwelling place, it's supposed to be all that. It's supposed to be a place where we feel confident. It's supposed to be a place where um, we feel safe. It's supposed to be a place where we can become whole and be rested. And again, it's not just a place. So I look at this and say, well, here's the deal. If you're searching for one or several of the things on this list, how can you find it? Right? Because we don't just stay there, and, and most of you know that. We don't just stay in naming and claiming and saying it's, you know, a tough year. It's a different kind of year. People are searching for things. Right? We always get to the point here at Grandview where we say, okay, so what? What do we do about it? Does that sound about right? And that's where we're going. If you're searching, how do you find it? If you're searching for home, on the shorthand, if you're searching for some of these things this year, how can you find home this Christmas? Well, let me tell you what the good news is. See, the good news is, is that God uses lights to guide us home. Is that God uses lights to guide us and to bring us home. And I am aware of how powerful that sentence and that imagery is um, certainly here in North America, probably worldwide, right? This idea of lights will guide you home, to come home. Do you know how many songs there are about home? We started looking at, at, at lists this week, and on Christmas Eve, we're going to use a couple songs about home because there's so many. Why? Because that, that evokes a powerful longing and a powerful feeling, right? Um, that's my only, uh, usually I make the prayer, I usually requ request what songs we're going to do on Christmas Eve. But, um, you know, it's why, it's why that Michael Buble and, and Blake Shelton, when they sing that song, I want to go home, that's powerful. You agree with that? Say yes. This is the narrative. And the good news is, you see, is that our God, our loving, generous, gracious God, has provided lights to help us find home. And the first light is this. The first light is what Jesus said, Emmanuel, God with us. The first light is Jesus Christ. When, when Jesus said of himself, light has come into the world. Yeah, amen. The first light that God has given to us to guide us to home, to those feelings of safety and serenity, the feelings of, of security, the feelings of confidence and of being loved and giving love is Jesus. The person and work of Jesus is a light that leads us out of darkness. Is that Jesus is a light that leads us out of the, the, the when we have a broken relationship with God and when we, when we feel separated from God, when, when every day we feel like, man, I don't know if my prayers even make it past the ceiling, Right? is that Jesus is the light that leads us out of that. Specifically, the person, the person meaning God with us. Meaning Jesus, God in human flesh and bone and blood and thought and emotions that is like our brother, right? That can relate to you, right? Can relate to me and everybody, all people, right? He's a light. And the person of Jesus Christ is God in human flesh that, has come to live in the, that came to live in this world and show us how to live in this world and how to live in eternity with God. The work of Jesus, the work of Jesus was that sacrificial atoning death upon the cross so that we can be forgiven by God through Jesus Christ and our relationship with God restored, right? 
That's the work of Jesus. That we can have a restored relationship. We can be made right with God so that then the Holy Spirit can come and work in us and on us and through us and move uh, around us, right? And bring us a sense of peace and bring us a sense of all those things on the list. You see, God has provided lights to lead us home. And Jesus is the first one. Here's the second light to lead us home to find those things is other people. Understand that God has always worked through other people. Men, women, youth, children. These are lights that God has provided to help find us, to help us find home. And let me, let me be more specific. It's when we encounter people who do or say Christ-like things. When we encounter people, either, either we're the beneficiary, beneficiaries of their love and their grace and their generosity and their kindness and their optimism and their hopefulness, or we observe people practicing either in actions or words uh, uh, love and helpfulness and gracefulness and kindness and, and forgiveness and all those things. We observe that and what happens? It points us to God. It points us home is what it should do. You know, I had written this, I had written this and finished this part of my message at about 4.30 this morning, 5 o'clock, right? And then I come in and, and on Sunday mornings, I always do a, um, a separate devotion out of this little book. It's a little prayer book that Bishop Reuben Job and, and uh, another guy put together. And so I always pick it up and thumb through it, um, just my own little thing on Sunday morning. So I'd written this part about, about, other people, God has provided other people to be lights to guide us home. And I came across this morning, because this is the way God works, this prayer by Mother Teresa. You all know who I'm talking about, right? St. Teresa, Mother Teresa, um, in, in her book, Words to Love By. Here's a prayer. I'm just going to read it. Here's her prayer. Because it's a prayer about being light to guide other people. Dear Jesus... Help us to spread your fragrance everywhere we go. Isn't that a profound thought? Help us to spread your fragrance wherever we go. Flood our souls with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess our whole being so utter utterly that our lives may only be a radiance of yours. Shine through us and be so in us that every soul we come into contact with may feel your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us, but only Jesus. So Jesus, stay with us, and then we shall begin to shine as you shine. So to shine as to be light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you. None of it will be ours. It will be you shining on others through us. Let us thus praise you in the way you love best, by shining on those around us. Amen. I, I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe just me. I just thought that was a profound prayer. And because um, of what I said is that God provides lights to guide us. And therefore, we also have the possibility of being lights by what we say and what we do, Christ-like things, that helps other people in a time of darkness be a light to guide them home and all those things that can be home. Now here's another light that God has provided. Last year during Advent, we spent all of Advent, um, every single Sunday in Advent, talking about the imminence of God and the transcendence of God. Okay, And those are big theological terms, but they're understandable. The eminence of God is that God is, is with us, not remote, not distant. God is with us. Emmanuel, eminence, Emmanuel, right? They're connected. Transcendence. Last year during Advent, we talked about these, these things that God does that transcend our understanding. And they transcend maybe even the laws of nature they, they transcend, they go beyond things that we could do. And people, a lot of people have those stories about these transcendent moments where God, because God is God, can use anything and everything, anything is at God's disposal to get our attention, if nothing else. If y'all still with me, say yes. And so here's some other lights I believe that God has sent, that God is using. I, I don't believe after the difficult and challenging year that we've all had that everybody's been impacted I choose to believe that the timing 
of the great conjunction. That's the official name. The great conjunction is not a coincidence. I choose to believe that this thing that people have told me about this week, about Saturn and Jupiter being close to each other, like 100 miles apart, and being closer to the Earth, they haven't been this close to the Earth since uh, 1623. And when I found out about that this week, Lisa Stevenson was telling me about it, and Aaron Haven was, I was like, what? I never pay attention to astronomy. I just don't. When they were telling me about this, and so I dug into it, and I researched it, and I looked at that, and you can believe whatever you want, but I'm telling you that our transcendent, amazing, awesome God of all years to, to pick, of all years to pick, to send the star of Bethlehem into our world, he did it this year. Amen. That's transcendence to me. And again, you believe what you want. I look at this and say, hmm, is this a star of Bethlehem? I think so. I think it is, right? It's a transcendent moment that God is using to get our attention to do what? To lead us home and to guide us home. And of course, and of course, here's the other new learning I had this week, is that this is all happening because of the winter solstice. Now, I had no idea what the winter solstice was about. I never paid attention to that kind of stuff until I started looking at it and reading about it and said, oh, oh, this is when the, the tilt of the sun, right, and the, and the tilt of the earth. And so tomorrow, December 21st, and, and, and I think I got this right. I'm new to this. But tomorrow, December 21st, will be the longest, darkest night of the year, right? The longest, darkest night of the year, like all year. And the year that we've had, it's just kept getting darker and darker and darker. Well, there's a bottom, is the way I look at it. Because what happens on December 22nd? On December 22nd, here's the way I understand it, as a big time amateur astronomer or whatever, is that starting December 22nd, the days get longer. But more than that, is that the sun begins to build power. And as the sun builds power day by day, the days get brighter. That's how I see that. And I believe that's God speaking to us. It happens every year, I get it. But this year, this year, I think we needed to hear, and I want you to hear, that every day, as the S-O-N, as the sun gains power in your life, as the sun, Jesus, gains power in your living. What we are promised by God is that every day will be brighter. Every day will be brighter. So I choose to hold on to this, folks, is the good news that God sends lights into our life to lead us and to guide us out of the darkness and help us to find home and to dwell in Jesus Christ. So that's the good news. That's the good news for all of us. And I'm going to pray about that and hope that uh, God writes that upon our heart. Lord God, I thank you for all the different ways that you find to get through to us. I thank you, Lord God, that you have provided lights, Jesus, other people, these signs and wonders that you're in control of and you're in charge of. I pray, Lord God, for every single person that's tuned in, that's here, that's connected to your church. I pray, Lord God, that, that you're, the power of your son, Jesus, indeed builds in us. That it builds in our, our heads and it builds in our emotions and that it builds in the things that we say and it builds in the things that we do with our hands. I pray, Lord God, that the power of your son shine brightly in us, so brightly that other people see you, that we point to you. I pray that you make it so. I pray, Lord God, a special prayer for all the people that are extra, extra grieving and suffering and hurting and sick and dying during this season. I pray for your, your intercession in the name of Jesus. And I pray all of this for all of us in his name. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray out loud, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.